So firstly, Steve, thank you so much for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. Now, Steve, everyone who has done obstacle course race, particularly Spartan race in the US, definitely aware of who you are. And people who have done the Obstacle World Championship last year and the year before at Lima, <laughs> I'm pretty much sure know you because of your iconic look and also because you're active on social media. But for our listeners who will be attending, you know, the Spartan World Championship for the first time yeah. and for general OCR enthusiasts in the Middle East, do you want to give us a very brief overview about who you are, your experience in trail running, which I think everyone should be aware about, and also how did you get involved in Spartan Race? <laughs> well, long story. First and foremost, thank you so much for having me, and I really appreciate it. Uh, yes, um, Steve Hammond, originally from the UK, um, but uh, uh, a long story short, uh, I now live in the US. I live in Lake Tahoe with my beautiful family, uh, my wife Stacy, and my son Henry, uh, who is uh, six years old or will be six years old uh, very, very shortly. So uh, we have a wonderful life in Lake Tahoe, uh, which used to be the home of the Spartan World Championships. Um, and it was great to, um, you know, just roll out pretty much my front door and there was pretty much there on, on the course at Lake Tahoe. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my career before Spartan, I was an international raft guide for many, many years. Um, and uh, I, I ran uh, what that meant was whitewater rafting. I, I ran big expeditions um, all around the world in Nepal and um, uh, Nepal, Africa, um, you know, on the, the Zambezi River, uh, Turkey, Norway, um, Switzerland, lots of different places. And I kind of had my big circuit, and uh, yeah, until um. Uh, I finally met my wife on uh, on one of the rivers in Africa. She was uh, a girl from California, and we ended up getting married and moved over to the U.S. Uh, in around 2012. Now, my um, you know desire to be in the outdoors kind of was was ever growing. I was a mountaineer, um, skier, climber, um, obviously into the whitewater rafting and kayaking. That was like my professional professional kayaker. Did a lot of races through that sort of stuff, but also. Um, kind of growing up in the UK, growing up in Scotland as well, I did a lot of fell running. So I did always have this love for, for running in the mountains, did a lot of, um, you know, kind of uh, odd extreme races um, that, uh, that, you know, involved kind of the, it wasn't quite sky running at the time, but, you know, um, it was that kind of uh, format in Scotland. They just called it fell running. Um, then uh, as time, you know, time went by, um, obviously it always ran for my own personal um, self. Uh, I did a Spartan race back in uh, 20, well, 2012 almost um, in Pippa Park back in the UK. And, um, and that was my first introductory to obstacle course racing or near enough. I did, a, I did some sort of tough guy, I think it was called tough guy event in 1998, years and years ago, just as a bunch of us in near Scotland, we did that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that was my first taste of um, modern day, as it were, um, obstacle course racing. And then I think how I got into Spartan racing was the fact that we had an amazing time on the course, but everyone got lost and it was just, uh, it didn't seem very well organized. And I kind of um, went up to one of the organizers and I was just like, oh, this could be really good. I was, you know, and he's like, well, you could always come and volunteer. <laughs> I was like, well, you could do something about it then if you think, you know, think you can, kind of like almost like an ad attitude. And I was like, you know what? I was like, all right, next time you have a race, give us a shout and I'll come and help you guys. And, and I got into the OCR scene back in the UK with Dirty Dozen, um, that was Doug Spence and a few other, and I kind of just, you know, I was in the process of changing careers, you know? So um, I was this whitewater raft guy that just met my wife and lived in the US and I'm, I'm in this transitional mode. And all, within the space of six months, all of a sudden, I meet guys from Spartan in the UK. My wife, uh, my you know, my wife now, uh, my girlfriend at the time was saying, "Hey, come over to the US. Come over to the US." 
all of a sudden, I go over to the US, I meet Mike Morris, I meet Johnny Way, um, who are sort of OGs, and they, they get me on a course at Spartan Race USA, and within three or four weeks of being in the US, I'd secured myself a job. Didn't have a work permit, but I had, I'd, I'd secured myself a job. Later on down the line, got myself a job at Spartan, and then the rest is history. That's absolutely wicked. And the fact that you're from England, I think I'm pretty much sure you know about John Alban. Was oh, of course. No, I, I, I met, John, met John, raced with John many, many years ago and still very, still, you know, very good friends with him. And uh, yeah, what a, what a guy. Do, do you think he'll be attending this uh, event in al as well? Or what are your thoughts on... John? John's not going to be here. Um, but I think he was, I mean, John has definitely moved on from the OCR career. Yeah. He's made himself very well known in the, uh, uh, you know, in the sky running and the trail running community. Um, and he's got his eyes set on some of the, the biggest prizes in, you know, UTMB and, you know, like winning the CCC this year. He, he is, he's an incredible athlete when it comes to sort of the trail running. Um, unless... You know, I, th I think he's had the invite to the Tough Butter Infinity in oh, Saudi Arabia. Okay. And um, the question mark is whether he's going to turn up or not. Because it's 80 grand and it's a big prize and it's a one-off, it may well bring him back to the sport just for a little taste. Yeah, and to be honest, the course is relatively easy as well. So, you know, that could be one of the motivations as well. Now, thank you so much for the introduction, Stephen. What I really liked about you and when I did research is when you talk about running, it is not only your passion, it is a full-time job for you as well. And, you know, yeah. what, you know, what I tend to find out is, you know, look, there are a couple of people who are passionate for things, but are they good at it? Some of them are not, but in your case, you know, you're most your passion with something that you're good at. And that is eventually what we can see when we do trail events or even obstacle course race events. So, you know, thank you so very much for being a part of Spartan events. Now, let's talk about the event that is taking place in Al Watba. Let's start off with the event taking place tomorrow. And tomorrow, I believe we have the 3K Elite event, right? So what is it that the athletes can expect at the event tomorrow? Absolutely, yeah. We, we've uh, we've been working very hard. We have an amazing team here who have been uh, have been definitely putting on the grind, uh, working out here in the desert. Uh, kicking off the weekend will be on the Friday, so tomorrow um, will be the three k event. Now, uh, let me give you a little bit of insight for for the three k. Uh, for those who don't know, the the three k is is a uh, is three rounds. And basically what happens in these three rounds is, um, uh, let's call it a one, one, three. Each loop is one kilometer and it has 10 obstacles. It's very, it's very highly packed, um, you know, highly dense, dense obstacles. And the obstacles will range from um, everything from a crawl to a dunk wall to monkey bars. Um, there is a rig on course. There's a double sandbag on course. It's going to be a bit of a game changer. And these are all very much back to back. And there's also a laser pistol um, as well. Um, so what athletes would expect is um, a, a course which will take six or seven minutes for just to do a 1K. And it will start off with round one. Round one will start with... Um, uh, so round one will have three heats in it. So they'll be split up into equal heats. So say, for instance, if there was 30 competitors and right now we've got about 30 35 men signed up so let's say if there's 30 signed up um and they're each in um heats of 10 so it'd be three heats going off in 10 and uh the top 60 so the top two thirds of the heat um of the fastest time so it doesn't matter in your heat where you come you could win your heat but in the other heats it's all based on time um the the top two thirds will go through to the next round. So if the top two thirds go through to the next round, there'll be two more heats in round two. So let's call it the semifinals. And then 50% of those will go through to the final. And then the final is three laps of the course. Really easy to follow. It's a great aspect for spectators. It's great for the film. You know, so you don't get these long running sections. It's obstacle packed. So within three kilometers, you get 
30 obstacles, double sandbags three times, a long multi rig three times, dunk wall three times, you get the deal. And it's very, very intense. And actually what we found, it's more of an endurance-y kind. It takes what probably, you know, it's kind of a 21-minute, um, which actually in, 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 in terms of sport watching, 21 minutes is absolutely perfect for a final. Yep. Really, really exciting. Lots of, you know, there's lots of changes that can happen within that, that sector. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of very good men coming and a lot of very good women coming as well. Now, regarding the double sandbag carry, and am I, and am I right in saying that that would have been your idea to have to do sandbag? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, we, we can, we've got a really good collaboration of a team together and we, we come up with uh, the right weights. Now, um, the correct weights uh, obviously going to be changed. It says 60 pounds on the bag, but we weighed every bag for the 3K event. And it's actually each bag for the men's will weigh 45 pounds. So they're, they're carrying 90. And the women's, um, each bag will weigh 30 pounds, so they will carry 60. So 60 and 90, just so that you guys are all clear on what people will carry um, for the double sandbag carry. And it's just this, you know, it breaks up a little bit of the course. It's a little bit tough. Um, you've got to have some composure of yourself and it really drives the endurance around. Now, unlike the beast, it's pretty much runnable. Yes, there's some sand on the course. It's a little bit softer underfoot. It's not flat and fast like some of the other events, but it's not awfully hilly either. Unlike the beast, it's it's very runnable course. Okay. And in comparison to the last event, I believe last year as well at Alwatba, we had the team event, right? You did. So it's, so it's pretty much that course Okay. with a, with a few tweaks. That is absolutely great. And uh, I believe tomorrow there is also a 5K night event. There is. We just events. actually, the team put out, um, it's about 400 little glow sticks, which light the way. Yep. One thing I have to say, it's a mandatory headlamp. So those who are participating in the 5K night race tomorrow, please bring a headlamp. Yeah. I don't know who would turn up for a night race without a headlamp, but there is a lot of people that do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at Leva, we did the super at night as well. We did, yeah. <laughs> Leva, that was, that was yeah, I, I, I watched a bit of that and that was absolutely amazing. So we light the way for you guys. Uh, in terms of little glow sticks, but you do need a headlamp in order to participate. That is absolutely great. And uh, look, I think lately Spartan is focusing on shorter distances, but you know, based on the feedback that I get when I'm interviewing athletes, some of them like Ryan Atkins and some of the OGs, they are quite vocal about it and they prefer longer distances. So we haven't changed anything. Yeah. We've changed the focus of this past year to introduce this 5k and the money the money has moved yeah. slightly now that's only for this year what happened with that and the reasons behind that decision was that because and we all know this spartan have gone through a bit of a financial crisis it's been very difficult to um you know there, there's been there's been a very lot of difficulty in paying athletes paying vendors you know Spartan have been under pressure. So there had to be some huge cuts somewhere. However, there was a little bit of money and there was a little bit of an incentive with um, Olympic, um, you know, foresight and uh, wanted to introduce more people into the, 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 the sport by uh, having a really good visual with this 3K. Now, we got, the, we, we got the green light to be able to put some money towards the 3K but not anything else. So that's why the focus did go slightly. And I, it pissed people off. Uh, yeah. and, I, and, and, and I get that. Is there still a beast? Is there still a super? Is there still a sprint? Yes. The sport hasn't gone anywhere. We've just been in this transition. Um, and we will see it come back next year. And I'll talk about that in a minute and, and the reasons why behind that as well. But the reasons why the 3K happened um, is because of the, the you know, the, the funding was of, of the specific distance and um, of because of the, the support from World Obstacle and, and, and their 
hope to really push this 3K, which it at one time would like to be the flagship of the of the Olympic sport Olympics. of OCR. That was the push behind it, and that was the decisions that got made way above me. But that's what we're going through, and that's why we have big money here. Um, however, we still have the beast and the world championship, you know, a world championship beast here in Al Bafra, which is a magnificent course. Now, I'll quickly add, next year, we will be adding back, especially in the US, a sprint, super, and beast um, national series. Okay. In Europe, there's going to be a sprint, super, and beast national series. You've got to do one of each race. And then all... Um, and then all the regional series will be a beast and a 3K with the money being split equally. And then following, uh, and then next year back here, the beast will be, again, the main focus. Okay, got it, yeah. So is it gone away? Have we gone away? No. And Ryan knows this. Ryan's one of my best friends. So he, <laughs> he, 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 like, he, he, he does know this. Yeah. Um, but is rattled because he does specialize in that area. Longer and not format. necessarily in the 3K. And my hope would be that we would attract different people from different areas of the sport and have different people winning 3K and different people winning um, the Beast. But yeah. right now, the sport is still so small that somebody of Ryan's incredible ability can still win both because we haven't, we're, we're not a big enough sport and it has, hasn't had its longevity to individualize. So it's a bit like having swimming, winning a two mile race and then someone winning a 50 meter butterfly, but they've got so specific into their training. Our sport hasn't grown that big yet. Absolutely. 100% agree. And one thing which I wanted to ask, you know, let's say when you're doing smaller events of 3k format or 5k format, is the number are the number of people turning in much higher for the smaller formats in let's say Europe, UK, or in the US in comparison to let's say Beast or Super? Um so so you're thinking there's more people that want to enter the, the smaller yeah. races? Yeah. Just the number I mean, of registrations, yeah. Yeah, so so um definitely more registrations towards a, a sprint, especially in the open heaters. So as we all know, you know, like the elite the elite racing and and we we've definitely changed it a little bit more for the regular season races for next year and i can talk about that in a minute where you know um it, it's 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 now into the competitive so the elite and age group have joined together um age group have actually grown over last the last year um in comparison to before so that has grown um the elites has kind of dwindled a little bit um that's probably to do with the fact that there's you know, being prize money taken away. And then the open heaters due to sort of economy has definitely taken away, um, you know, has definitely dropped in numbers. But the sprints have always been the the kind of the higher, um, uh, the more participating. And the reason being is because it's a shorter distance. It's going to attract more people for first timers. Now, a, a stat that I was absolutely uh, shocked by was that most Spartan races in the U.S., 70% of people are first time racing. Yeah. So people, only a few people in the community actually keep coming back race after race. Most people that you see that open races are bucket listed. They want to come and do a Spartan race. Generally, the, the shorter distances. Yeah. And then that's it. They're, they're done. Some carry on and do the super and then the beast and get the trifecta. Yeah. And then the hardcores, which are, you know, probably most of your listeners and, um, you know, a few people that I see at every single race come on and race, you know, um, time yeah, and time Chris. again. But it, it was a bit of a shock that, you know, 70% of people have, have only ever done, you know, one race. They only do one race and then, and then don't come back. 
Yeah, I was watching one of the videos of Joe Cena where he actually said the exact same thing that, you know, the people do actually prefer the shorter distances. And one thing to completely digress and before I lose it out of my uh, mind, uh, you're from UK. I mean, any chance of spot race to do an event in Peak District by any chance at all? Or... Oh, the Lake District is absolutely beautiful. I love, love the Lake District. I've done a lot of climbing there and a lot of mountain running. It would be awesome. Again, it's just finding venues, finding venues at the right price. Um, I would love to, you know, the, the, there was a great venue up in Scotland. Um, the team out there are great. They are definitely searching for, UK is definitely a smaller place with um, a little bit more difficulty in getting the right venue. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Brookie and team do a, do, do a great job at finding them. And what, what we found, find is if we find a venue, you can kind of, get a better return on your money if you go back year after year after year. Um, and it's difficult to establish a new venue, not to say there will never be a race in uh, the Lake District, but I would hope one day there will be. That'll be absolutely great. Now, going back to Al Watba, on the 10th, there is a 3K Team Relay World Championship as well, right? The team, yes, on the Sunday. It's going to be yeah. great. So what yeah, is that's going to be national athletes can expect. Yeah, we 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 uh, we tested it last year on that three yeah. K course. It was a bit. It was uh, it was. We knew what was happening with the three K, and we we tested an event with a team. And it it it's fast. It's furious. It's the right amount of distance, and that's great. So basically, what happens is you get um, people in leg one will be at the start line, and um, you know they do one loop, they come all the way around, and you need two men, one women. Um, uh, or, or two women, one men, but you just have to have um, you know, mixed gender in there. Um, and then basically, um, they do one lap, they do a handoff, um, leg two does the, the third lap, uh, uh, so the second lap, and then uh, leg three does the final lap and then finishes on, on the fire jump. And um, yeah, it's very, very exciting. There's a bit of tactics involved with like kind of who goes first, who goes last, that kind of stuff. And should be really exciting. And yeah, that's I on think the Team Sunday. USA won last time, right? What's that? Was it Team USA? It that was won? Team USA. Yes, it was Chris Rogowski and VJ Jones, VJ. Ryan um, well. and Rylan, and uh, they, yeah, Rylan Shadek, um, yeah. who is going to be here competing for the three K. Um, so the three K is very, very highly competitive. Very highly competitive. Got some great Europeans coming over. Um, got Ryan Atkins coming over, got Lindsay coming out, you know, coming over. So it, it's very, very highly competitive. That's absolutely great. And what I wanted to ask next is, Steve, if you talk about the al Bar location, it features soft sand and it does add a unique element to the race. Now, how does this impact the race dynamics? And what advice do you have for participants, particularly tackling soft terrain and soft sand? So like in you know, any, any, any type of running sport, if you have, uh, like terrain counts for a very large number of, you know, people's success. So if it's a fast flat course, you're going to get people who are predominantly road racers or who have trained flat and fast, they're going to be a little bit, um, you know, at an advantage on that type of course. People who have done a mountain course, you know, and they, they trained in the mountains and specifically, um, you know, trained on that terrain are going to do very well on those mountain, mountain courses. Now, those who have done their homework for the beast, there is rel relentless amounts of sand, tons and tons of sand. And we've set you up every single little day. It, it is going to absolutely break people because... How often do people train on that? And unless you are a specific training on sand, because I went for a run the other day through it, and I consider myself as fit, healthy, I've been doing a lot of mountain running. I haven't done any sand running since last year when I was back in, you know, and so it's taken, I've been walking around the course, you know, marking the whole course, and my legs are tired. So <laughs> my biggest advice is like, if anyone wanted to win the beast, is that you spend your time training on the terrain that you're going to race in. Yeah. Being prepared with proper sand gaiters, making sure it's all glued, making sure, you know, because a lot of people have come over and they're not going to have, you know, two or three runs in their proper runs in their gaiters. So 
they're not going to know how their, their gauges are going to work. They're not going to know if sand's going to get in and cause blisters. And 21K is a long, long way. It's hot out here. The hydration, there's a little bit of humidity as well. So the hydration is really going to be an issue. Are they, are they prepared for the heat? Have they trained in the heat? That kind of stuff. So um, all of these things play in part to uh, the challenges that they're going to, you know, that they're going to face and how they're going to overcome it. If you've trained it and if you're are aware of all of this, um, then you're going to do really, really well. So um, it would be really interesting because, again, it's going to be highly competitive. There's a lot of very good people coming over. There's some great French athletes coming over. There's some really good Italians coming over um, who are going to race. So very, very excited to see, especially, you know, sort of the uh, North American um athletes versus some of the European athletes uh, and beyond. And, and of course, we can't forget there's some incredible UAE athletes as well. And, and I remember reading a blog by John Albin. He actually stated regarding the lugs of the shoes. You know, it would have been ideal if we tend to wear shoes where the lugs are relatively smaller than, let's say, the... That was what he mentioned. Yeah, in- I mean, I've been I've been running around in um, you know a pair of hokers, um, yes. and I've got I've actually got craft shoes on right now that have got little lugs on. The ones with the slightly wider base, mm-hmm. like hokers and and the crafts that I'm wearing now, um, have a bit more of a surface area. So the small like flat running shoe, you know, the uh, the speed flats. Um, you may be stinking in a bit more sand. The ones with a little bit more cushion or a bit wider with kind of less lugs. You don't need grip out here. You don't need, it's not mud, it's not rocks. It's not, you know, you could get away with a pair of... Um, Ultras, uh, maybe Ultra. What's that? Ultra. Yeah, Ultra would be perfect because of the yeah. wide, wide toe box. So anything which is kind of like, you know, wide um, would, would do people very, very well. That's absolutely great. Now, before we move on to the event taking place on the 9th of this month, that is the Beast. Yeah. Now, I want to find out what is it that is going on in the torture chamber? That is the brainstorming session that you guys have. That is you with Quentin and maybe Garfield Griffith. What is it that you guys decide? And how do you guys come up with, you know, the course plan? How do you guys go out and torture some of the athletes on the course? Yeah. Yeah. So- so last year, you know, um, the plan, the planning process, you know, almost takes six, seven months, even longer than that. You know, there's been people planning this event um, since we left last year. Um, and, and even, you know, myself and Garfield did a drive around um, and then Quinton took it over quite recently. And so I, I sat down with Quinton and we went through maps and maps and maps and seeing what equipment we have and seeing what we can build and you know um there's lots of different things that we kind of look at um and and, uh terrain is one one of the biggest obstacles that people face and you know obviously we we carefully map out the course and work out where best and get the distance as tight as we can and then we spread the you know spread the obstacles out and see see what works for the 3k and see what works in in different places and, um, you know, I think the team, the planning team have done an incredible job. And it's not just the obstacles. It's not just the course. Um, but, you know, there was a whole load of planning that kind of goes into this, you know, with the licenses and then the rental equipment and then the, uh, you know, the, the tools needed and um, um, many, many different hoops to jump through from rental companies um uh to kind of make this work and the you know work we can get this done pretty well in the us but but over in a foreign country where a lot of you know a lot of people have not been before we've got a fairly new team that have come over very experienced in the us but i've never been to the uae before and um you know it's been a bit of an eye-opener because it's it's you know it's doing the same thing but in you know with different different tools different um (laughs) You know different approaches to stuff um and and that yeah i mean that's obviously really interesting to to watch but there is a you know a huge planning team which does an incredible job behind the scenes um everything from in festival the festival team are great and kids course and just making sure that we've got and there's lots of changes last minute as well you know 
um, and and it happens. Things don't show up. Some trusses, you know, um, gone missing. We've had some, you know, we've had some issues this this week with, um, you know, with, with security of some stuff. We had some tools go missing. We just overcome. That's yeah. what we do as an obstacle company, and the, and the the uh, the team adapts and overcomes. It's amazing. We're we're you know it's it really is special to see and to to work for. One hundred percent agree. And I remember speaking to Garfield Griffith last year, and he was talking about the event in Lever, where yeah. because it was in a remote desert. We had to make sure that even the tiniest equipment you get it because in case you forget it, you have to travel three to four hours and another three to four hours back again. Exactly. And adapting and overcoming these obstacles is absolutely pivotal. Yeah. And now, what I wanted to ask next is, you know, regarding Spartan trail events and Spartan OCR events, what are the key challenges or differences that you guys keep in mind when you're, let's say, arranging a Spartan trail event? So, you know, Pick at the correct venue that can kind of, um, you know, be able to cater for a trail and also an OCR event, making sure there's enough spaces and trails that we can kind of almost have it as its own course and its own design coming in. There's many, many challenges in, 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 um, in designing that. But, you know, first and foremost, picking the right venue that can handle that. And it's great to give back. Uh, you know, our um, consumers another option to do. And obviously we, we love the trail running. And the thing is, is if we can, if we can get people in from different backgrounds, there's a lot of people who didn't want to do Spartans who are trail runners. Well, now they've got an option to do both. They may see the, they may see the OCR and get into OCR. So it's another avenue for us to bring in more people, which is great. Absolutely. That's keeps good. us all in the job. <laughs> <laughs> and regarding the beast that is taking place, is Spartan introducing any new obstacle this time? Um, not currently. Um, okay. We are. We have got an innovation team, but you know, budgets have been tight recently, and every new obstacle that kind of comes comes forward um, obviously costs a lot of money. And you know, as 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 I've said, with the budget restraints, we haven't been able to. Uh, um, put our ideas to fruition, as it were. We've got a lot out there in the, in, you know, in, in the head. Um, we would love to, we would love to make into reality. Um, and when the time is right, I'm sure there will be more obstacles, um, you know, being unveiled. Now, Steve, I'm going to put you on the spot, and it's prediction time. Ooh. So, 3K Elite, who do you think is going to smash it, male and female? Yeah, so... There's a few people um, who have done a few of these events. And for me, the 3K is all about experience. So there's a couple of really good contenders. I watched Unhill Contero out in um, Mexico. He's a bit of my dark horse of how good he can be on different terrain and how good he was in Mexico at the 3K course. And he's done, a, he's done a few of the US events now of the 3K. The people who come in brand new to the 3K, because uh, there's a few people that are in the 3K, have only done one, maybe two events, are going to struggle a little bit, especially if they haven't done it at all. It's a bit of a shock to the system. Obviously, we've got the Ryan Atkins, VJ Jones, Rylan Shadegg as well, coming from North America, are all very handy. We've got a bunch of French, Italian, guys coming in it's very very difficult to give a um to give a who's going to win the men's event i'll come on to the women in a minute um in the men's event i'll probably have to put my money on rylan shadeg is at top form at the moment he can be very very good as i said unhill um extremely good athlete never ever ever count out bj jones yeah. extremely strong human being yeah. and of course Ryan Atkins and I think they're definitely going to be your highlights um, I think the Europeans are going to be better at the long di longer distances so the beast race I think we'll see more of the uh, the, the, Euro the European Greg Greg Gregory Basilico um, he's going to be very very good um, it'd be interesting to see how he fares in the 3K. 
after seeing him in Greece, it's hard to rule him out. But because he's not done many 3Ks, that that's why I'm kind of maybe fifth or sixth because of these other guys have got experience. You need a bit of experience how you tackle this 3K. You know, there's another dark horse from the UAE called is Obeid. I think he's a Spartan Pro at least as yes. well. Yes, yes. Um, again, not had the experience with the 3K, yeah. but going to be very experienced on the, the beast. So where... Could they, could they could they do very well? Of course they could. I think experience does come into it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And what what um, surprises me is I think Ryland and VJ Jones they did the Deckard World Championship just a few days ago. As just, well. just a few days ago, yeah. So they're yeah. in prime top. Maybe that's been a bit too much, but that they've got a week's rest. We know that Ryland doesn't need much rest, and we know VJ is very strong as well. Um, going on to the women, for me, there's 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 two. There's two outstanding, you know, um, three. So, obviously, we've got Lindsay Webster. Yeah. You're never going to roll around. The goat. The goat. However, Ida Steingart has, has done incredibly well from Denmark in the U.S. this year. She's also done well in Europe. And she's going to be a high contender for this type of course of how good she is at rigs. And how good she is at the double sandbag game. And then, of course, Alyssa Petrova, who is, you know, a wonderful human being and also an incredible athlete, um, who came second last year in the super race, who will be very useful, but again, has never done a 3K race before. And does that experience, um, that lack of experience on the 3K, maybe would drop her a little bit lower either. I'm not sure. Anyway, there's, there's my predictions for the 3K. <laughs> what about the Beast? Again, the Beast, <laughs> it, depend, it depends who goes. I mean, I, I've got strong money on, you know, um, Gregory Basilico, but it, it, it's, it's not all running. And I think if Ryan Atkins or Ryland Shadegg does go out there, the strength needed to keep pace on the sand is going to get them through faster. And that's why I think Lindsay, if she runs the beast, I don't know if she will, she will come home pretty strong. Maybe Susan, um, Susanna Kokomova, who may be coming over, she's very strong on that. I'm not sure what state that, uh, of fitness she is in. Um, but um, again, a lot, of, a lot of strength, not necessarily running speed, if that makes sense, oh. will come... Will, um, uh, will come through on this type of course. Yeah. Thank you so very much for that. Now, Steve, you personally, you've done quite a lot of ultra events, not just OCR. Now, when do you think the Middle East can have any spot in ultra events? Because there are quite a lot of iconic locations besides, you know, let's say Abu Dhabi or Dubai. What do you think? This would, this would be an amazing course right <laughs> here. Well, let's do an ultra here. I would absolutely love it. It'd be... <laughs> This brutal ultra loop in the sand that just goes on for miles, hitting every single sand dune, be my dream course. I would absolutely love it. It'd be brutal. Um, one day, one day, let's do it. But would you I'll, prefer I'll Al Watba? Would, would you prefer Al Watba or would you prefer Leva for the Spartan Ultra? I mean, if we get over to Leva, heck yeah, for that for that ultra. Just just for the the. I mean, the thing is, Leva there's bigger sand dunes. Um, but there is also a lot of flat running on the salt plains. Here, the beast may be harder than the just because okay. there's there's less there's there's less salt flats. There's less um, you know it's not as, as as hilly, but the sand you know the unrelentless sand. So. I don't know. Um, I'd love to hear people's opinions who have done both races and see how this compares to Lewa's um, beast. Definitely, definitely we'll get a feedback on that. Yeah. And uh, Steve, reflecting on, let's say, the previous World Championships in Abu Dhabi, what were some of the most memorable events or moment that actually stands out for you? Um, for the Abu Dhabi events or all World Championship events? Just the Abu Dhabi events. Uh, the Abu Dhabi event. So, I mean, last year was it was just such a awesome. It was my first time um, setting up as I've been to I've been to um, 
uh, you know, the UAE before. But for me, um, you know, watching the sunsets and, you know, just setting the course in this, uh, like, amazing sand. I think in terms of, um, you know, a highlight was seeing the battle of, um, you know, Lindsay and um, uh, Susanna. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not Susanna, uh, Lisa Petrova. And that was just oh. an amazing battle on the sand dunes, just seeing, you know, coming over. Um, and then, uh, you know, Sergey yeah. finally getting what he has trained so hard yeah. for. Because Ryan, was, Ryan you, you know, Ryan Atkins was the, was always the uh, the kind of the bride, as it were. Um, and he won it in, in Liwa, and that was just such a great battle uh, between him and Sergey. And it was a repeat with the Super here. And um, it was just a little bit more fast and furious. But I, I remember watching them come into that final mile, and they were just neck and neck, yeah. you know. And it was that that it was really interesting to see where he got the strength from to really push that through. Um, so for me, the, those two battles were were pretty incredible of the two couples two the two power couples correct yeah um which is incredible so uh you will see who comes through with the two power couples this uh this, <laughs> this weekend yeah and i remember sergey after he threw the spear throw it was pretty much done that you know he had won the yeah. championship after the spear throw yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> incredible now regarding the race village which i think is absolutely iconic at alwatta what is it that participants can expect at the race village? Because I do remember this was one of the few events where we did have a couple of pints as well after the drink session as well, right? After the I event. hope so. Um, because because um, it is based at a hotel, they do have the license to serve beer. So yeah. um, I believe you, you can get, get a good pint somewhere, which is great. Um, and, uh, you know, just enjoy the setting and the, the... What's beautiful, it's on kind of a little slope. So... At that time, you can watch the sunset. You can just see it kind of go down, and that's that's pretty exciting. And um, I think one thing which is iconic this year is where the award ceremony going to be, and yeah. we're 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 having the award ceremony um, at the Zayed Festival. So you know, um, busting people over to the Zayed Festival, it's going to be real exciting and pumping, and the big stage there. And I, I think that's going to be very, 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 very exciting. Oh, so we'd have to go to the Zayat Festival and then come back. Yeah, I think it's in the, it's in the evening, so oh, yes. people yeah. will go home. They will get washed up, and you know we have we have a like an award ceremony um, in the yeah. evening on Saturday night. And would you advise anyone to take, let's say, a Guinness during the Beast Coast? <laughs> oh, you remember that? So years. Okay, so people who don't know. Um, was uh, my <laughs> I do like I do like a good pint um, every now and again if people that know me well um, but um, I did a, I did the Tahoe Ultra I think it was in 2017 I was setting all the course up and um, on the, the the Sunday I think it was we we did maybe it was the Saturday we did the Ultra so I raced the Ultra and my um, my work colleagues sneaked a Guinness. Uh, into my uh, drop bag. Um, so halfway <laughs> through the course, they had found the Guinness. So uh, I did the oblig obligatory, um, di you know, uh, I down downed a pint of Guinness halfway through. Um, loved it at the time. About 30 minutes later, I was, I was uh, not loving it <laughs> that much <laughs> running back up the hill. But uh, I'm sure it gave me the, the, the correct calories that I needed <laughs> and my direction to finish the course. That's a very smart way of saying that your work colleagues put it in rather than you. <laughs> now, Steve, on the 10th of December, there's also a 10K Super event. And on the website, it says that, you know, it's ideal for joining a team. So how will the 10K event be different? Let's see in comparison to the 21K, because I'm pretty much sure. I think the twist door and those obstacles won't be there at the 10K event, right? Yeah, so so the um, the Super is such a great distance um, because you still get a taste of some of the, the endurance sand dunes, but it's only a little bit here and there. It's not as bad as the Beast Course where you're just on for miles and miles and miles of this soft sand running. So you do get a good taste of what the Beast Course gets. 
and you do get some very decent obstacles in there as well. Um, you know, there's Twister out there, there's Olympus, it's, it's tough. Um, and um, yeah, uh, very, very challenging event. The sprint is very different to the super because there's a lot more places that you can run and, you know, a lot more places that you can kind of just, uh, you know, open up a little bit. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think you've got three great courses out there. And there are kids event as well. Beautiful kids event. Yeah, we absolutely love it. Um, they always have such a great time on that, uh, that little kids course. It's, um, yeah, really good. Ash has done a great job. Um, he's the kids lead here and, um, it looks, uh, looks a stunning little, uh, uh, little trip out for the kids. And one thing which I wanted to ask, you know, as being part of the Spartan family, how does it feel to you that when you see second generation athletes competing at the events, how does it make you feel when you, let's say, see Hobie Cole and now his son, and I'm pretty much sure this event, you know, there are quite a lot of second generation athletes who will be participating in. How does it feel you being part of that? So, I remember many years ago, chatting away with Hobie, and he was like, this is my son, Horde. He was like this tiny little kid, and I was just like, gave him a high five, and, you know, it was like, his dad had won a big event, and it was really great. Fast forward to a couple of years ago in Utah, I think it was maybe 21 or something, um, 2021, maybe 2022. My, 22, my, all my, oh, was that 21? Yeah, 22. 22, that's right, it's yes. COVID. Everything merges in, and I'm rabbiting and I'm running alongside, and I'm like, who is this kid? <laughs> Who who is and he started kind of gobbing and it absolutely it's actually on one of the live streams, the oh. commentary between us. Then I'm like, Hey mate, what's your name? And I'm like, he's like, Rah rah, you know my dad. I'm Hawk. I'm like, bloody hell. I was like, no way. I was like, you're you're I know your dad. <laughs> and it just it just twigged. And I was, and he was leading the, he was leading the race. He was leading Ryan Atkins, eventually being caught because, he, um, you know, <laughs> he he didn't develop as much uh, uh, body strength right there. He does now. He's he's got really really strong, but he was a skinny little runner that was like way ahead of the pack and absolutely loving it. But uh, I just remember his dad used to like. Um, uh, chatting a lot and just kind kind of giving a bit of shit here and there with um you know some of the words um uh, you're just winding people up his son is exactly the same looks like him runs like him and um yeah just again a great family but that that was one moment that i saw the second generation of this sport come through and i'm like that's pretty cool i'm 43 right now i've been in this uh, you know uh world you know since I was 32 years old. And I want to hope that it, when I'm 53, hopefully I'm still running around and, um, uh, you know, I see the next generation coming through, um, including my son as well. So I uh, can't wait. And, you know, I was just going through Facebook and I think it was in Southwest Spartan. You know, there was a guy who was, I believe, in his, about his 50s. And there's a possibility that we might see the third generation of athletes as well. So, you know, being part of that is absolutely wicked and I think, you know, absolutely self-motivating as well. So thank you so much, you know, Steve. Now, before we go, I had two fun non-fitness related questions. The first one is an easy one. Your favorite genre of music and why? Oh, so, ah, uh, my genre of music is so, so wide. I can do everything from classical to, you know, some heavy metals, proper heavy metal. Um, I love nineties punk rock. Yeah, okay. kind of. Yeah, I kind of love that punk rock uh, era in in the, in the nineties. Uh, late nineties is kind of you know kind of what I like. So if I had to have one genre, it'd probably be that. <laughs> that that's absolutely wicked because I've been listening to Rage Against the Machine quite a lot lately. That is great. <laughs> Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Any, anything from the late nineties into the early noughties, yeah, that's yeah, all of that kind of stuff. And which celebrity do you think would smash 
the Al Wadba Championship event, let's say the 3K and the 21 Beast? Celebrity, or, or can they be a sporting celebrity? Anything, anything, yeah. The one person... Who, so, okay, so, so background on the reason why I picked this person. The reason why these type of people do so well in Spartan races is the people who are in the mountain climbing, because the amount of stuff that they climb in, the kind of terrain that they're on, and runners. So if you get that combination of a really good climber, because you know the grip strength's there, you know that the ability to carry heavy stuff is there. Now, John Alban actually trains with this person, Killian Jornet. Oh, yeah. Killian Jornet did a Spartan race. He would probably wipe the ground with almost everybody. And he's a Koros brand ambassador, if I'm not mistaken, right? He is indeed. Yep. And he's never done a Spartan race, but Killian, if you're listening, probably not. But he is, he's actually one of John Alvin's training partners at the moment. Um, and uh, I know that John's got his ear, and maybe one day we can get Killian Jeanette out. Uh, maybe the Tough Mudder Infinity Challenge can get, get Killian out there. But he would be one person that would be able to transition easily to this kind of sport. That's absolutely great. And one final question. If there was a beer mile and a wine mile, who would be your running partner? Now, I know who your running partner for the wine mile would be, but let the audience hear that once again. Yeah. <laughs> um, for the beer mile, who would I pick? I know that, I know that Ryan Atkins likes a good beer. I think we would, we, we would have a great time with the, with the beer mile. <laughs> that would be awesome. And what about wine? I'm not sure well, they have wine mile, right? <laughs> they, they probably do have a wine mile, but, uh, you know, I know Nicole Miracle can knock back yeah. a few wines. So, uh, yeah, I'll take Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely great. Thank you so very much for that, Steve. And as we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Whether it's about your journey, the upcoming World Championship event this weekend, or any other upcoming projects that you're currently working on? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's been, it's been a, um, it's been an amazing year. This is, this is currently my 10th year officially working for Spartan. Although I raced back in 2012, 2013, this is, this, I'm into 10, um, 10 years of working. And it's just been an amazing time. And, you know, the people, the, um, the community has been absolutely unreal and incredible and i would i would never have dreamed the first time that i raced in 20 you know back in the day that that this would have come you know all the way through to um you know setting up another world championship event and um sort of be being right there at the you know try trying my hardest to um you know have the direction of the sport going in somewhere where I believe that the athletes want to go and I believe that the, you know, um, the, the community wants it to go and ultimately uh, where we want it to go. And, um, you know, I've worked very hard to get myself into a position that, you know, I can kind of um, get myself there to, to listen to all these and, and, and make, make decisions that um, ultimately make the sport better for Spartan. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's my overall aim is to, you know, encourage as many people into this amazing sport and try and make the sport better and better every year. That's absolutely great. And, you know, one thing which I did mention earlier as well, there are very few people, you know, who know what the passion is and they take it as a job and you're definitely one of them, you know, Steve. So absolutely beautiful. And thank you so much, Steve, for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. Hope you, hopefully you take good rest tonight and tomorrow hopefully you see you at the course as well thank you so much and awesome Thanks. having you on um the show um and uh hopefully i will see you uh here in al wafa tomorrow